are pivot tables dead inside Excel? Well, in today's video, we're going to have a look at the pivot by and the group by function inside Excel and explore its features and benefits and the advantages and disadvantages of using these formulas. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's just create a pivot table from our data here and then compare it with the pivot by function. So let's go to insert pivot table and we are going to select our same table right here, press OK. And now what we need to do is put our departments in the row as we have here and the dates in the column section. And we can simply put our totals over here. Now we have created our first pivot table. We're going to take this across to the pivot by function and see the differences right here. Let's just move this table across here so that we can see how we're able to reconstruct this within a formula. Let's go to equals pivot by. And now we need our row fields or which are the department. So let's select that. And then we need our column fields or which are the dates. So let's just do that. And column fields are right here. And then we need where our values sit. So we're going to take the totals right here. Now, the simple thing we did on the other one is use the function as sum. Now, we have many other functions we can use, but for this example, we're going to go to the sum. So this is how you would create a pivot table from the pivot by function, which is very similar to a pivot table. One advantage of the pivot by function is that it's totally dynamic. So let's have a look at the toys right here. And we have toys here and toys in the pivot table right here. Let's change this to 10,000 and let's see what happens. So as you press enter, you can see that it's updated it right here dynamically. However, with the pivot table, you would have to go in and refresh to get the updated values appear in a pivot table. The next thing that we can do is add another layer after the department. Now, let's say that we want to add the item name and summarize the data. So we simply go back to our first row field and we can just delete that. And we can simply then select both of the fields right here, department name and item name and press enter. And now you have a data summarized with the department name and the item name at the second level. Now let's have a look at the optional arguments for the pivot by function and that's a field header. So if we just press a comma here, you can have a look that currently we don't have any of the field headers showing. You can create your own, but we're going to select number three here where it's going to ask the pivot by function to show the headers. Now you can see you have a department name, item name and date sold and the totals are already there. So this is another feature that you can use in the pivot by function. The next argument in the formula are the row total. So we just come up that and the row total depth is now, do we need a total, a grand total? You can have totals at the top or subtotals. But for this, we have a total here at the row level and the column level right here. So what we need to do is let's just remove these and press zero. Now, the next thing is we have a sort order. We'll come back to that. So we'll just put another comma to ignore that. And let's just press a zero to remove the totals completely. There you go. Now you have a table without any totals. Now say that we want to have subtotals under each department and bring back the totals on the right for each. We can simply go back into our formula and we can click into the row total depth. Let's delete that. And now we're going to go to grand and subtotals. So let's press two there. And once we go to the zero, we are also going to change this back to one, which will give us our grand totals. Now, when you press enter, you find that at each department level, you will have a subtotal right here and the total at the column M. The next argument in this formula is sorting it by row order 
or by a column sort order. So let's have a look. When you look at the formula, this would be considered as number one, this would be number two, and then you have the column with the values, which is number three. So what we do is let's have a test out here. We're gonna sort order, let's go by default. You have the order alphabetically in row number one but let's type in minus one. So a positive number one for that column would mean a sending order and a negative number would mean a descending order. So let's type in minus one and we should get a descending order in this column right here. Okay, so now you can see that toys are now right at the top and you have them going down in decreasing alphabetical order. Now, just to test that, we can go back and have a look and press one, and you have that there as well. And now, if we want to sort the values in descending order right here, we can simply go back to the sort order and type in minus three, the third row along, and press enter, and then that gives us a descending order of our totals. The final feature of the pivot by is the filter argument. So let's go across to the formula bar once again, and we're not going to use the column sort, so we can just put in two commas there. Now we highlighted the filter array. So the filter array, the first thing is to select where you want to filter. So let's select the department, and let's highlight this row right here. And what we're going to do is we are going to remove the toys from here. So what we need to do is we can use an equals or we can use a not equals. So we're going to put a not equals here. And as it's a text value, we're going to put this in brackets in, in speech marks right here. And let's put toy and let's press enter and see that the toys will be removed right here. There you go, we don't have toys anymore within our data set. Another advantage of the pivot by is a grouping data by the text function array to text. So what we need to do is let's just check our department and we will highlight our column here and the column field is we are going to select our country of origin and we have that. And what's going to be our values are we are going to put in the item name. So here we have a feature that we could use called array to text. And what we need to do is just make sure that we don't have any headers or any sums right here. So we'll just put that as a zero and close the bracket. And we simply get a list of all the countries that are available. So you can clean this up and use everything that is in fact from China in the bakery department and the condiments and you can get a list separated by a comma from the list. This is a powerful feature that can also be shown to you. The pivot by function certainly has its place in smaller data sets, but when you get to larger data sets, you can manipulate your data very fast. You can sort it and you have a lot of different sort options as well. And you can even show your data in summarizing it by different values right here in the table. You can even have parent totals, column totals, and you can easily manipulate your data here. So pivot tables have their place in a larger data set and the pivot by function definitely has its place with smaller data sets. So let's just have a look at the group by function and it has the same syntax as a pivot by, but it's just one dimensional. So instead of having rows and columns, you will just have rows. So let's group by the department right here and we can go and have the values, which are the totals here, and we're going to sum these up. So let's just press enter here, and we find our table right here. Now you can add a next level, so we can add the item name. So instead of having a B1, two column, we can select both of the columns right here, and select those, press enter, you will find you have two layers right here. Now you can continue adding field headers if you like. So let's do three to add field headers. And if we want to have totals, we could also have totals right here. 
and if we want to add any of the sort order we could do that too we can sort it by the totals and if we want to filter something we can also filter it out for the department right here so all we need to do is highlight the department once again and let's say that we want the department to only equal electronics right here so let's type that in electronics and let's see what we get right here and there you go we have filtered and grouped by electronics in a descending order so the syntax is just the same as a pivot by thank you for watching this video today and if you like content like this i would appreciate a like and subscribe and until next time happy spreadsheeting